Begin log. SCP-7001 McInnes, Wyalo. Erickson, is this Director Moose? SCP-7001 McInnes, yep, speaking. Erickson, this is Alexander Erickson of Exclusionary Site 21. I'm hoping you received my message yesterday. I never got a response. SCP-7001 McInnes, um. Erickson, I understand this is somewhat inconvenient, Director Moose. It's a quick checkup on your site to make sure everything is where it should be. SCP-7001 McInnes, uh huh. What happened exactly? My answering machine clears itself out every 12 hours, having all those messages piling up gives me anxiety. Erickson, yeah, you are, probably shouldn't do that, Director Moose, but that's a conversation for another time, I guess. What happened was that there was a minor reality-altering event. Nothing to be worried about. SCP-7001 McInnes, how very worried I am. Erickson, reality-altering events can be dangerous. SCP-7001 McInnes, very dangerous those reality-altering events, would never wanna be caught in one of those. No siree. Erickson, I, H.M. Can you just let me do what I need to do and we can go on our way? Quick check up and we're good. Line is silent. Erickson, great. By our last estimates, Site 19 is housing 432 different anomalous entities or objects. Correct. SCP-7001 McInnes, yep, counted them myself this morning. Papers shuffling. Erickson, I got the, are uh, here. I got the signatures from everyone stationed at Site-19 last night. Everyone is accounted for, so that is good. SCP-7001 McInnes, cool. That all. Erickson, well, Director Moose, no, and this is why this call was rather important. We noticed a number of discrepancies in your anomaly checklist. SCP-7001 McInnes, oh, that's odd. Erickson, you seem to be listing incorrect anomalies and missing ones that should definitely be on there. SCP-7001 McInnes, here's the thing, Alex. Those went through like five different levels of command, including myself. If something was missing we'd know. Erickson, not saying I don't believe you, but, these are pretty obvious ones to be missing. SCP-173 isn't on here of all of these. I'd think you'd remember at least that one, given it's the anomaly your site built the Euclid Wing for. SCP-7001 McInnes, we don't have 173. I'm pretty sure that's at another site. Maybe you have something wrong over there. I'm not a fan of incompetence, Alex. Erickson, you know what I'm talking about. Right. No response. Erickson, you know, the statue you have to keep watching, or else it moves. Is everything alright over there? SCP-7001 McInnes, we don't have an SCP-173, and we don't have a statue. I sent the right list, damn it. Erickson, no, you didn't. You're missing that one, and at least 20 other anomalies that Site-19 takes care of. Like, come on, the 173 file clearly states, moved to Site-19 in 1993. 
Nothing on this paper says it was moved to another site. Nothing here has been updated since 1994. So either you lost an anomaly, it doesn't exist anymore, or you're being purposefully difficult. SCP-7001 McInnes, I told you, I counted this morning and there's no godforsaken statue here. There's only 50 anomalies over here, goddamn it. I think I would have seen it if we had it. Erickson, wait. SCP-7001 McInnes, what? Erickson, did you say you have only 50 anomalies? Line is silent for 5 seconds. Erickson, hello. Line is silent for 13 seconds. Erickson, can you hear me? McInnes, ha. Huh. Moan. What is going on? Erickson, hello. Director. McInnes, how long have we been on this call? Erickson, excuse me. Is this Alan McInnes? What are you doing at 19? McInnes, why yes. Yes. I'm here. I'm back. End log. Item number, 7001. Containment class. Kitter. Special containment procedures, due to the recent discovery of SCP-7001, methods of containment are still under development. However, through the combined efforts of Razor, Foundation Exclusionary Sites, and the Overseer Council, SCP-7001 can be reliably tracked via the use of NISTICs. Efforts headed by the Overseer Council are currently concentrated on uncovering the origin of SCP-7001. Description, SCP-7001 is SCP Foundation Site-19, the most extensive secure facility constructed as of writing. Accommodations for over 400 anomalies, offices for a maximum of 2,000 employees, 13 on-site mobile task force teams, and offices for Overseer Council members are present within SCP-7001. SCP-7001 is not a solitary physical location. Instead, SCP-7001 can manifest at buildings portions of land, and anomalous areas officially designated as SCP Foundation Sites, Provisional Sites, or Areas. SCP-7001 alters these locations into Site-19 through architectural augmentation, the manifestation of SCP-7001-1, mimetic influence, and alteration of documentation. SCP-7001 modifies the internal topology of its target, leaving the external architecture untouched while converting internals into the Site-19 floor plan, regardless of the affected area's given size. SCP-7001's mimetic effect is extremely potent. Once a site is affected by SCP-7001, all ranks of the Foundation will believe that the affected site is Site-19, with the original site designation being wiped from memory until SCP-7001 detaches and connects to another site. Between 1990-2004, Site-17 was affected by SCP-7001. All documentation created during and prior to this period was affected by the anomaly, thus allowing further spread. SCP-7001-1 are SCP Foundation personnel manifesting within SCP-7001. SCP-7001-1 instances vary in appearance and behavior within each manifestation. 
records of over 50,000 uncorroborated documents of Site-19 employees were uncovered following numerous audits on personnel files. Among SCP-7001-1, there are four specific instances that will manifest at each affected site. These entities are bombastic, unprofessional, and forward slash or consistently break the protocols of the Foundation. SCP-7001-1 are Dr. Jack Bright, a senior Foundation employee with a long lineage of family members that either contained or employed by the Foundation. SCP-7001-1 was affected by anomaly SCP-9631 which makes its physical appearance unique between manifestations. SCP-7001-1 can be identified by its necklace and unprofessional attitude, no matter the current circumstances. SCP-7001-1B Dr. Alto Clef a senior foundation researcher affected by an anomaly that prevents its face from being seen through photography or video footage. SCP-7001-1B is also a low-level thaumaturge, but has not utilized its abilities for any offensive or defensive means. SCP-7001-1B can be identified by its three multicolored eyes lack of business casual or lab safe clothing, and short stature. SCP-7001-1C Director Tilda D. Moose Director Tilda D. Moose is not a physical entity. It is instead an aspect of SCP-7001 that convinces the current director of the SCP-7001 affected site that they are instead Tilda D. Moose a senior Foundation employee. SCP-7001-1C is an expert in thaumaturgy and thaumatological entities and a former member of the group of interest The Serpent's Hand. References to SCP-7001-1C are not solely concentrated on the manifestation of SCP-7001. Documentation refers to SCP-7001-1C as the co-director of Site-17. This has not been corroborated. SCP-7001-1D Dr. Kane Pathos Crow, a senior Foundation scientist whose consciousness, through unknown means, was transplanted into an adult golden retriever. SCP-7001-1D is stated to have a genius-level intellect and a calm demeanor. SCP-7001-1D lives in Site-19 and rarely makes appearances throughout the site. Containment Failure Report On the 17th of February, 2004 Two anomalously affected locations under the jurisdiction of the Foundation underwent simultaneous catastrophic geological events, causing all Foundation-made structures to be totally destroyed. No cause has been discovered and recontainment attempts are ongoing. Addendum 7001.1 SCP-7001 Manifestation Timeline for ease of documentation, the affected site will be referred to as Site X. Phase 1 SCP-7001 causes all personnel stationed at Site X to believe they are stationed at Site 19. Furthermore, they will believe they have always been stationed at Site 19. Site X will be referred to as Site 19 and its original site designation will be quickly forgotten. Phase 2 The current site director of Site X will believe they are Director Tilda D. Moose. Their previous mannerisms, speaking patterns, and behaviors will change to reflect this. Phase 3 Documentation referring to Site X will be replaced with Site 19. Concurrently, 
documentation referring to the previous SCP-7001 affected site will be reverted back to the original numerical designation. Phase 4 architectural alterations will begin. Containment wings for Site 19S anomalies, housing, and office spaces will manifest. Phase 5 Site 19S anomalies and on-site mobile task forces will manifest in their appropriate locations. Architectural changes will complete at this time, fully altering the floor plan of Site X into Site 19. Phase 6 Site 19 specific personnel will manifest, including SCP 7001 1 through SCP 7001 1D. Full SCP 7001 manifestation is complete. SCP 7001 infection takes 84 to 96 hours to fully complete. Once complete, Manifestation can persist undetected for up to 20 years. Addendum 7001.2 Discovery On the 17th of February, 2004, SCP-7001 was discovered following an audit from Exclusionary Site 212 by Director Alexander Eriksson on Site 43. Between the 16th of February and the 17th of February, Site 43 was affected by SCP-7001. As manifestation was in Phase 4, this allowed for the discovery of SCP-7001. Upon detection SCP-7001 detached from Site 43, only to re-manifest soon after at Site 120 which began the conversion process. The Overseer Council immediately began an istic regimen and conducted the following meeting on the 17th of February, 2004. Meeting of the Overseer Council. Begin log. 05-1, all right, we're good to start. Sorry for the late notice on this meeting but I think we can all agree we have a pressing issue at hand. Murmurs of Agreement 05-1, on the 16th of February, 2004, one of the new exclusionary sites uncovered that Site 19 doesn't actually exist as a location. Now considering we were all in Nebraska throughout the construction process. 05-5, Nebraska 05-3, 1, Site 19 was built in Nevada. 05-5, wait, wait. No, it wasn't. It was in Illinois. 05-1, oh for the love, ahem, someone remind me to add this to the file, please. I'm enacting my mandate. Containment of this anomaly is a main priority until we sort it out. 05-8, sort what out, exactly? No one has a straight testimony. 05-1, history, something to lay the groundwork that we can 100% say is a true fact, and go from there. Before construction, before containment, when it was just an idea. 9. Can you get Jones on this for us? 05-9, she was made aware yesterday. Razor and a few sorting algorithms are beginning a dump and compilation of all 19 related files today. ETA is 3 days at most. 05-1, good. 05-7, Perhaps the most pressing matter at hand is that four of our most trusted personnel are fake. How did this slip through every single layer of command? 05-1, Maria will probably tell us more, as far as we know there has never been a foundation-wide issue caused by 19 staff's negligence. Maybe they covered it up. I don't know, but if they didn't cover anything up that doesn't make any sense to me. 
We have an anomaly creating a fake site that we've all been to before, with fake personnel we've all met numerous times, and fake anomalies we've researched. It's clearly trying its damnedest to hide in plain sight and justify itself, but at the same time, it's good-natured. 05-12, normally I am not the first to agree with one, but this doesn't add up. I concur here. Our goal should be figuring out a when and how, but also its endgame. 05-1, hell. The dead man's switch 3 is in sight 19, meaning at any point one of them can go rogue and erase us from memory. 05-6, has anyone been in contact with the administrator? I tried a few times today, and nothing. 05-2, I attempted to after the exclusionary site sent us their findings. Radio silence, of course. I didn't expect much else. 05-13, why do we need him? 05-10, admin was the one who ordered the construction of 19, correct? 05-7, Razor will clarify, surely. If memory serves correctly, 10's assessment is accurate. 05-13, do we have a plan of action? 4. You're normally on top of this stuff. 05-4, you yeah, so. I have a few strategies we can attempt. Like, here's the thing, this is a weird one. It's not out of my wheelhouse, but in case you guys forgot, I was deliberately told to leave 19 alone. No task force drills, no firewall or backdoor testing. Nada. I'm going in kind of blind other than what I already know about our facilities. 05-1, hold on, who said you couldn't do anything to 19? 05-4, you, all did. 05-1, did anyone order 4 to stay away from 19? Silence. 05-4, okay. I got a letter when construction first started saying something like, conduct all operations elsewhere, any action against Site-19 that would compromise its integrity, deliberate or otherwise, is strictly prohibited. 05-13-9, contact Jones and tell her to prioritize finding whatever 4 is talking about. 05-9, I. 05-13, what are we looking at for this plan of action, for? 05-4, you are, off the top of my head I'm gonna go with a standard infiltration, detain, attack operation. I'll use my mandate as well if this goes through, I want Red Right Hand to handle this since they'll keep quiet with sensitive info. With the mandate. I think we should keep up with this Nistic regimen. I'm at least putting the agents on something like two doses a day. 05-13, reasonable enough. 05-4, there are three, four, humanoids we got to look out for, but if we can get at least one of them we should be good. Knowing Bright and Clef, they'll probably be the easiest. Moose might be a bit harder without some firepower. I don't even know about Pathos Crow. Either way, get in, get information the old foundation way, then attack once a vector is made known to us, get it under our control. 05-10, I feel like having a dog working for us should have been a red flag. 05-1. Hindsight is 20 forward slash 20. 05-4, I mean, it's not like he's a stupid dog. 05-13, let's just put 4's proposal to a vote. Status. Approved. 05-1, meeting adjourned. We'll convene again once we have more information from Razor. 
End log. Containment failure report. On the 21st of February, 2004, the Euclid class anomaly wing of Site 17 experienced an unprecedented containment breach, leading to the accidental release of over 40 anomalous entities and objects. Of these, 34 have since been recovered. The specific cause of this containment breach is unknown as the Site-17 security system had passed official foundation guidelines the day prior to this occurrence. Addendum 7001.3, Mission Report SCP-7001 was discovered to have infected Site-120 following its detachment from Site-43. Under Overseer Command, Mobile Task Force Alpha-1, Red Right Hand, was ordered to conduct a covert mission into Site-120, posing as Level 4 Foundation personnel to infiltrate the site, detain one of the anomalous humanoids present, and ascertain any information which could lead to the containment of SCP-7001. Mission Summary Upon entry, Alpha-1 agents Pluto, Mars, Phbus, Saturn, and Mercury were met by an incomprehensibly large, empty corridor not present in the known Site-19 floor plan. The room was bare except for hundreds of SCP-7001-1 instances. Attempts to converse with these entities failed outright as agents were either ignored or offered expressions of confusion. The true size of this lobby was revealed to be approximately 3 kilometers in length as the team proceeded. Other oddities were discovered, including the floor and ceiling incrementally angling towards each other, requiring agents to crawl through the last third of the room. For the latter half of the expedition, the internal PAR system played the final three minutes of Hey Jude by the Beatles, consisting solely of Paul McCartney and an ensemble repeating the same phrase. Variably, the song would alternate to a loop of the first eight seconds of Eye of the Tiger by Survivor. Once the end of the room was reached, a door, far too small for human entry, was located. In front of the door was a glass vial of blue, viscous liquid with the word shrink, sick, scratched onto its surface. Upon attempting to turn back and find another penetration vector, the agents were met with a wall in their way. Spray painted on it was the phrase nah. Once consumed, the blue liquid caused all the agents to shrink to a size at which they could comfortably enter the door allowing access to the 7001 affected Site 120. Upon entry, the agents rapidly reverted to their original size. After scoping out the area, agents quickly identified SCP-7001-1B4 due to its disguise of thick-rimmed glasses connected to a false nose and mustache. No effort was made to obscure its third eye. Agents Mercury and Pluto pursued SCP-7001-1B through a safe class containment hallway before a mass of SCP-7001-1 instances began filing out of the previously empty containment chambers, preventing SCP-7001-1B from continuing and allowing for its capture. Mercury and Pluto brought SCP-7001-1B to an interrogation room to conduct an interview. Meanwhile, Mars, Phbus, and Saturn conducted reconnaissance of the site. Mars, Phbus, and Saturn noted a number of abnormalities not present in other manifestations of SCP-7001. These included 13 SCP-7001-1 instances appearing to be frozen in place. Three teams of armed researchers running through the site, 
asking random individuals whether they needed to be contained or not. Agents who were asked this question attempted to confront these instances, only to receive the response that being contained would ensure stability in all cases. SCP-7001-1 instances that agreed to be contained were led into empty containment chambers or unoccupied office spaces and locked inside. Multiple walls which could be walked through. SCP-7001-1 personnel who passed through these walls did not appear confused. A containment chamber which, once entered, would exit out to a different location in the site. Multiple stairways terminating at flat walls. Transcript Begin log Outside of the interrogation room, an SCP-7001-1 instance appears to be frozen in place. A 1-32 Mercury, what's up with this guy? A 1-01 Pluto, let's just get on with this. A 1-32 Mercury, weird. A 1-01 Pluto, how's it going? Your alto, right. SCP-7001-1B, no. Who is this alto you speak of? I've never heard of this person in my life. SCP-7001-1B has refused to remove its disguise up to this point. A 1-01 Pluto, HM, you look mighty similar to him. Weird. Why don't you tell me your name, then? SCP-7001-1B, well, good sir, I'm Treble, uh. t Ribble. I am T. Ribble. A 1 01 Pluto, T. Ribble, interesting. Sounds German. What's the T stand for, T. Ribble? SCP 7001 1B, it stands for T. Like the letter. The one before you and after S. A 1 32 Mercury, I've had enough of this place. This is a goddamn joke. Mercury roughly removes the glasses from SCP-7001-1B's face. SCP-7001-1B, what the fuck? That scraped my nose, douche. A 1-32 Mercury, you're gonna tell us what the deal is with this place. SCP-7001-1B you who a good cop bad cop routine. How fun. This is site 19. We contain things. A 1-01 Pluto, yeah, so do we. We were actually told to contain you. SCP-7001-1B, wouldn't be the first time someone's tried. A 1-32 Mercury. Listen, Alto, I don't like having my time wasted. Having my time wasted makes me upset. A 1-01 Pluto, it's heartbreaking. SCP-7001-1B, you know, if you wanted to do this right, the best way would have been sending in Hardus over here, have him apply some pressure. Then the nice one comes in and gives me a bit of a break, make me like the nice one, you know, then Hardus leaves so I'd be open to talk to the nice one. You guys aren't great at this, but I appreciate the effort. A 1-32 Mercury, I don't know what you think makes you an expert, but I'm not gonna take advice from a guy who thought a pair of disguise glasses was enough to hide and didn't even think to cover up the most identifying thing about him. SCP-7001-1B, you know what, I'll concede. That's a good point, great point, even. I'll have to remember that for next time. 
a 1-32 Mercury, there's not gonna be a next time if you don't start explaining what you and this place even are. Just help us out and you'll be on your way. SCP-7001-1B, helping you out would only compromise everything else, jackass. You're at the tip of the iceberg. A 1-32 Mercury, tip of what iceberg? SCP-7001-1B, the Foundation took a while to get itself right, and now you want to waltz in here all Johnny Big Bollocks and send it crashing down. Look at this place. SCP-7001-1B walks to a window and pushes its hand through without any resistance. He then slaps the SCP-7001-1 outside of the room, who does not react. SCP-7001-1B, we're already a goddamn mess because of this dog and pony show. Fuck that and fuck you. A 1-01 Pluto, the hell are you even talking about? SCP-7001-1B, a chew. SCP-7001-1B quickly stands and launches a small pellet at the floor. Upon impact, thick smoke fills the room. A door is heard opening. SCP-7001-1B sprints away from the interrogation room. End log. Pluto quickly pursued SCP-7001-1B through the site while Mercury remained in the interrogation room to ensure all recordings were intact. Upon attempting to exit Mercury found all doors and windows had been anomalously removed, leaving him trapped in the blank room. Mercury transmitted a distress signal to all operatives, and his exact location was identified. However, the initial interrogation room was found to be empty upon arrival. Agents were subsequently ordered to exit the site. While walking through the main lobby of SCP-7001, agents noted a crack at the center of the floor, forming a small, branching, spiral pattern. Through the cracks, a black, reflective substance could be seen. Containment Failure Report On the 24th of February, 2004, SCP-5001 underwent a large-scale power outage, causing portions of the anomaly to falter before the total cessation of operation. The internal Hume level of SCP-5001 began to spike rapidly and non-essential personnel were evacuated. Power was quickly restored and SCP-5001-S internal Hume level returned to base levels. Concurrently, Foundation researchers monitoring SCP-169 noted a severe uptick in activity from the anomaly, leading to a major shift of the southwest South American continental shelf and multiple cataclysmic geological events. A disinformation campaign is ongoing, however normal veil maintenance procedures have proven unreliable. Worldwide dispersion of aerosolized amnestics is under consideration. Addendum 7001.4, Overseer Council Meeting Failures throughout the Foundation's containment infrastructure continued to increase rapidly. Sites frequently reported failures of electromagnetic locking mechanisms, leading to the re-adoption of turnpiece locks. The capture of Agent Mercury, in conjunction with the unprecedented increase in containment failures across the Foundation, prompted O5-1 to order an emergency meeting of the Overseer Council which commenced on 25 February, 2004. Meeting of the Overseer Council Begin Log 05-9, I'll start. Jones isn't even halfway done with the compilation. 
she apologizes, but a majority of 19s files are encrypted and require much older technology with even older firmware to even begin cracking away at everything. We did get one thing of note, though. Cryptologists managed to decode the site's construction information found within 19s files. This is what Jones sent me. The folder listed under construction is either incomplete or deliberately missing information. There are three files, all scanned text documents with the oldest dating back to 1925, all written by the administrator. We have one that is the first foundation charter, specifically the section on containment. Of note. There are numerous parts of the document detailing physical pillars which do not appear in other copies of the charter I have on hand. This term has not been explained in what we've decrypted so far. The second file contains some sort of research document on random chance correlating to containment success, with highly varying success rates. This is the first mention of a potential Site-19 in any file, and another mention of creating a physical pillar with no further explanation. The third is another research document from 1946. It describes the construction of Site-19 and contains another research document on random chance versus containment success, with a much more stable rate which showed that. As chance lowered, success increased. The words security, containment, and protection were scribbled on the bottom, with the word containment crossed out. I don't know what to make of this. If any further information comes to light I'll send it your way. Any ideas? 05-10 Perhaps whatever admin attempted to do with 19 or these so-called physical pillars failed, and 19 was adversely affected, causing it, its personnel, and its anomalies to become some sort of mimetic anomaly attached to the idea of the foundation. 05-1, we need to get in contact with the administrator immediately. There's clearly some sort of cover-up going on. Has anyone had success contacting him? I'm batting zero on all my attempts. 05-2, I put in a few calls to his office before we convened here. Nothing. 05-1, regardless, containment of 7001 should be paramount at this point. It's clearly growing unstable and is evidently trying to justify itself by force. 05-2, the giant room at the entrance, the hurdles to even get in, the capture of Mercury, the architectural issues, and the Dash 1S acting abnormally. It's as if it knows we're on to it. 05-4, oh. Speaking of Mercury. I was just talking to the other agents that went in. They were telling me that Merck's transceiver is still on. It should have died like six hours ago. But, uh, just listen. 05-4 removes a transceiver from his breast pocket and connects it to Alpha 1S communication channel. There is static for a moment before a male voice repeats the word contained followed by cheering and clapping from a large crowd. 05-4, that has been on repeat for like 8 hours. We haven't even been able to talk to Merck at all. If I had to take a wild guess, considering all the other craziness that the team experienced, 7001 got confused, considered red right hand an anomaly and attempted to contain all of them. Grain of salt. But I would bar all entry of regular staff into 19 as a precaution. I, for one, don't want any more people ending up trapped in that whack-ass place. I'm charting a recovery mission for Mercury at the end of the day today, too.
05-1, we can put that to a vote at the end, but considering we're grasping at straws, I'm inclined to believe it. I don't see another choice here. 05-13, agreed. On the subject of containment, what is the total number of containment failures we've experienced this past week? 7, you normally deal with this area. 05-7, I can discuss the goings on for our sites, yes. A majority of this is unprecedented. 17S Euclid Wing had a significant breach of approximately every anomaly stored there. The prevailing issue among all of the sites is that the esoteric procedures we've coordinated have begun to falter. The ritual to retain SCP-2845 has not been as successful as in the past. Site 322 and Area 179's integration program has been temporarily suspended as no breakthroughs have been noted over the past three weeks. SCP-3000 has shown a significant escalation than what we have previously recorded. SCP-5243 has occurred five times in the past 30 days. That's four of perhaps 20 ongoing issues. 05-1, so, what, we're having a containment problem. 05-7, that appears to be so. 05-1, god damn it. 05-8. Any luck retaining control of the dead man's switch? 05-9, Maria's cryptologists are working on getting us a remote connection. Nothing has worked so far. The terminal hasn't been turned on since the 70s, as far as she knows. 05-12, excuse me. The amount of guesswork going on here is all a touch unreliable, no. I know we are all often suspicious of the administrator, rightfully so, but there has to be some sort of explanation for this that doesn't revolve around some top-level conspiracy with almost no footing. 05-17, when did the first containment failure happen? If I remember, it was at two anomalous locations. 05-7, the 17th of February. 05-1, correlation doesn't equal causation, but the 17th of February was also the date the exclusionary site called McInnes. I think a bit of leeway in this subject is required until we get a clearer picture. You coming in and trying to cast doubt on a difficult situation is helping nobody. 05-11, even ignoring the dates, I think we can confidently say that the discovery of SCP-7001 is leading to the difficulties we're experiencing in day-to-day -day operations. With direct containment of 7001, we can get this situation under control and restore order, and if that doesn't work, we may be able to neutralize the anomaly to prevent these issues from arising again. 05-1, okay, 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 let's take a step back. Are we all on the same page here? We all want to contain this, right? 05-13, yes, 1. We all want to contain this, but what I'm seeing is that our efforts are exacerbating these containment failures. I'm not sure why this is happening but perhaps actually taking a step back to refocus ourselves would be of help here. 05-1, no, listen. I don't think we're on different sides here, but, we're on board time. I really don't want to know what happens when we lose the opportunity to establish control. This could be way worse than it already is. 05-13, I agree. 05-12, I am sorry I brought it up in the first place. 
I did not know this theory meant so much to you. We are all just going to go with the wind now, right? 05-1, we're being played like fools, 12. 05-12, oh, come on. Are we really doing this? 05-1, all I want to do is restore order, that's our job. And now. We are looking at a broken masquerade if what Seven is talking about continues. And, from what I'm seeing, more breakdowns are coming at us at an alarmingly exponential rate. 05-12, yes, I agree, but wouldn't taking a step back to give ourselves more optics make more sense? 05-1, look, okay, I'm just getting frustrated. And I hate to work off of guesswork too, I really do. But I see us at a crossroads here. The administrator won't pick up his goddamn phone and explain what's going on, and since the discovery of 7001, we haven't had a stable containment rate of above 65%. We can take a step back, risk more containment breakdowns, possibly to the point that we can't fix it, or, we can get into the site, get it under our jurisdiction, and work from there once everything is back to where it should be. At this point, maybe, maybe, I'm a bit more open to all of this because I just want to take care of this whole situation, I'm seeing clear cause and effect, and I know all of you are too. So, can we work together here? as a unit, as the Overseer Council, and contain this anomaly. Please. 05-1 pauses. 05-1, we're voting on a recovery mission for Mercury and direct containment of SCP-7001 after the remaining red right hands take control. All in favor. Council vote summary. Status. Approved. 05-1, motion passes. We'll reconvene once containment is ensured. End log. Containment failure report. On the 25th of February, 2004 the Foundation Power Grid, which supplies electricity to the majority of the Foundation's East Coast facilities, underwent an as of yet irreparable outage. This caused over 50 sites and areas to undergo various levels of containment failure. Affected sites are subsisting on their on-site backup power as engineers assess the power grid issue. Addendum 7001.5, Site 120 Mission Report the final manned mission into SCP-7001 was to be conducted two days after the Overseer Council meeting. 05-4 charted a similar strategy to the first exploration, however, a much larger squadron was drafted from the Alpha-1 pool of agents, consisting of 35 members. Agents were permitted to detain any and all SCP-7001-1 instances and utilize portable reality anchoring devices. Two defensively trained Thaumaturge members of Alpha-1 were permitted to subdue SCP-7001-1C by any non-lethal means. Agents were deployed to the SCP-7001 affected site 120 on the 27th of February, fitted with standard weaponry and body armor as well as infrared and night vision goggles. Mission Summary Transcript Begin Log Agents are readied at the north, south, and east gates of SCP-7001. The lead agents of each squadron, a 1 Pluto, a 10 Venus, and a 100 Uranus ready halothane canisters. Each door has been lined with C4. A 1-01 Pluto, on my ready. A 1-01 Pluto, 3. 
a 1-01 Pluto, 2. A 1-01 Pluto, 1. The explosives are remotely triggered. Three simultaneous explosions strike on the feed. The doors are demolished as thick smoke begins to fill the area, leaving a clear entryway for all agents. A 1-01 Pluto, go. 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 Agents file into their respective corridors. As the smoke clears, Site 120 staff are seen cowering for cover. Agents scan the floor plan, no alterations from Site 120's architecture are noted. Site 120 security teams quickly swarm the breached areas. The security team lead, Jeremy Cornwell, identifies himself. A 1-01 Pluto, Alpha 1, hold your fire. The hell is going on. Cornwell, identify yourself or we will shoot. A 1-01 Pluto, Wo Cowboy, calm it down. Pluto, member of Mobile Task Force Alpha 1. Cornwell, the hell are you doing treating one of your facilities like a war zone? A 1-01 Pluto, is this Site 19? Cornwell, what are you talking about? Site 19S in Philadelphia. There is a moment of silence. A 1-01 Pluto, fuck. End log. A majority of the Alpha-1 infiltration team exited Site-120 and returned to Site-01. Agent Pluto was questioned by Agent Cornwell for 78 minutes and required a verified reference letter from 05-4 before Site-120 staff were convinced to let him return to base. Pluto was led to a containment chamber by Director Daniel Ashworth wherein a partially nude agent Mercury was asleep on a cot. Ashworth explained that Mercury had been unconscious for the previous 72 hours. The word contained was stamped onto his body numerous times. Cartoon file uses and the initials JB and AC were also found scribbled onto Mercury's body. Mercury was airlifted to a Foundation hospital as Pluto returned to Site-01. SCP-7001 infection was confirmed at Site-322 in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. With agents deployed to Poland, another full-scale invasion of SCP-7001 was put on hold as the Overseer Council met to discuss this information. A cocktail of sedatives was found in Agent Mercury's bloodstream, leaving him unconscious for a subsequent 36 hours. When he awoke, he was unable to remember any information past the disappearance of all exits in the interrogation chamber. Addendum 7001.6, Overseer Council Meeting the following is a transcript of an Overseer Council meeting taking place on the 27th of February, 2004. The purpose of this meeting was to discuss the reversion of Site 120 and the infection of Site 322, along with further reports of containment failures across the Foundation's infrastructure. Meeting of the Overseer Council Begin log. 05-9, are we ready? Good. I got one last file from Maria that the team was able to decode. From the construction folder, again. We were able to pull the backside of the third document I sent. From what I can tell it doesn't add any context to what we already have. It's a bulleted list in the administrator's handwriting. It lists the administrator, the overseer council, and site 19. 
Next to the administrator and the overseer council is the phrase limited immortality, stable. Next to site 19 is the phrase mimetic nature, no longer physical, otherwise stable. Once again, I don't know what to make of any of this. 05-12, I am putting my foot down. We are running head first into a brick wall over and over again with these missions. It is time to take a step back and actually look at this situation and come up with a proper, well thought out solution. 05-4, excuse me, 12. I didn't pull these out of my ass. We're all at blame. You all agreed on what I wrote up, and voted on it. 05-12, I am not talking about you, 4. I am talking about 1. 05-1, oh, this is bullshit. 05-12, how? How? Please, please tell me. I remember that rant the other day. Order is all we have. Maybe your memory is not as sharp as it used to be, but do you want to know how we got this order? By building it up, block by block, not running in somewhere, guns blazing and hoping for the best. 05-1, we have all the information we're going to get. Maria can't get through any of the other files and I'm tired of playing this wishy-washy game of touch and go. Our entire containment infrastructure is hanging on by a thread, a fucking hair, because this anomaly, listen again, anomaly, is uncontained and out of control. What more is there to do? We need to go to Philadelphia, take control of the damn compound, and contain this anomaly. 05-2, we just tried that, twice. This thing is clearly smarter than we're giving it credit for. 05-1, it's trapped in 322 for at least another two days until the full transformation into 7001 is finished. We can go in while it's relatively unaffected and camp out until we have a clear sign of what we're dealing with and... 05-3, that won't work. Site 43 wasn't fully altered when it was discovered and that didn't stop it from moving to 120. 05-4, yeah about that, 1, another mission is not gonna happen. 05-1, why the hell not? 05-4, I have like 85% of red right hand stuck in Europe, they are gonna be on a plane for over 10 hours and we'll need some R&R. &R. We're probably looking at like two days of downtime at the least before I can get them together again. And don't even get me started on the wasted supplies and the new infiltration plan and the 05-1, so use another task force. 05-4, no fucking way. I already used my mandate because I wanted them for secrecy. No way. Not happening. 05-1, we can't get in contact with the administrator, we can't even get into the site, and now we want to take a step back. We need to get containment in order. We need to get the switch in order. And most importantly, we need to get ourselves in order. What is so difficult to understand? 05-12, sit down. You are acting like a child, an impatient child, and it has gone on for long enough. I am proposing we overrule one's mandate in favor of research to establish the best vector for immediate containment. Who is in favor? A majority of the council agrees with 05-12. 05-1, this is outrageous. We're so close, I know it, and now we're throwing away all the progress we've made. 
We can't let this happen. 05-12, your feelings have not helped up to this point. 4, once 322 is fully converted into 7001, I believe an unmanned drone operation would be the best to begin. We can move on from there once we have enough information. Are we all in favor? Council vote summary. Status. Approved. 05-12, majority is for the motion. It passes. End log. Addendum 7001.7, Drone Surveillance. Plague underscore fart underscore eater dot png. UIE drones. Three unmanned intelligence explorer drones, UIEs, designated HUIE, DUIE, and LUIE, were retrofitted with Scrooge.AIC, a pattern recognition program. HUIE was tasked with surveilling areas with high personnel concentration while DUIE surveilled the containment wings, and LUIE surveilled the walking traffic corridors throughout SCP-7001. All UIEs were also tasked with the key priority to locate the dead man's switch. Mission Summary HUIE Findings the fourth floor personnel corridor was overrun with over 250 SCP-7001-1 instances. All instances were wearing an identical necklace to the one seen on SCP-7001-1. A heavily distorted version of the audio file discovered in Addendum 7001.4 played on the PAR system throughout the entirety of HUIE's exploration. Multiple humanoid entities were discovered. These humanoids appeared to be two to three SCP-7001-1 instances fused together at various points on the body, commonly the waist or arms. Unaffected SCP-7001-1 instances did not seem to note this oddity. SCP-7001-1B was located in a panic room via HUIE's infrared scanner. SCP-7001-1B appeared to be lying motionless in the fetal position. On the opposite end of the room was a canine believed to be SCP-7001-1D, also lying on the floor. Faint, distressed whining noises were heard, it is unclear which party was responsible for the apparent melee. Altercations between SCP-7001-1 instances occurred, wherein instances would form teams ranging from four to seven members, incapacitate another instance then attempt to lock them in a room. This occurred approximately once every 10 to 20 minutes. It seemed that SCP-7001-1 instances were expecting an unknown outcome once the target instance was contained. All bathrooms were left in a state of total disrepair, with all toilets, sinks, and urinals missing. The plumbing these fixtures were previously attached to continuously spewed water. The office of Director Paul Lug appeared to be converted into a lush forest. Trees had been artificially widened and carved in a manner similar to bookshelves. Upon entering the office, SCP-7001 Lug, who was hiding among the foliage, spotted HUIE. HUIE readied tranquilizer pellets as SCP-7001 Lug began carving a defensive rune in the soil. The burst of energy from this spell caused HUIE to lose stability in the air and crash to the ground. DUIE Findings DUIE entered the Euclid forward slash guitar containment wing the largest of SCP-7001-S anomaly storage units. 
All cell doors had been unlocked and multiple anomalies were roaming throughout the halls. Of note, none appeared to be hostile. DUI attempted to connect to SCP-7001's security terminals, only to find that the system shut down 12 hours prior to this exploration. Subsequent attempts to connect found that this system had never existed. SCP-173 was found in its cell with SCP-131 keeping direct eye contact with it. Fecal matter and blood had piled up to a height of approximately 30 centimeters. Locked in a small containment chamber was SCP-527, who was cowering against the door. Part of the wing was converted into what appeared to be the primary alternate dimension accessed via SCP-093, wherein a large group of Dr. Wondertainment's little misters were playing a game of the Foundation with SCP-3301. SCP-6999 was blaring on the PAR system of a single containment chamber wherein SCP-6096, SCP-106, and SCP-682 were located, staring at each other. All closed-circuit televisions were playing episodes of SCP-4228. A large group of dead SCP-7001-1 instances were found in an interview room. At the center, leaning against a table, was an apparently exhausted SCP-049. Approximately two hours into this exploration, multiple anomalies attempted to lock themselves in containment chambers, appearing to grow distressed and frustrated when the chamber locks failed. The end of the Euclid wing was anomalously converted into eight identical hallways branching a seemingly infinite distance. DUIE proceeded through the third hallway. The walls appeared to be stretched by an unknown force. Two hours passed. The material of the walls began to warp and widen outwardly, shifting in material to raw cookie dough, then black volcanic rock then diamond, and finally white ash. The hallway continued to widen until the sights could no longer be seen. DUIE continued through for approximately 78 minutes until what appeared to be the center of this expanse was located. Placed on the floor was SCP-184. As DUIE attempted to return to the main wing, the hallways were no longer accessible. LUIE Findings LUIE entered the first floor lobby, the epicenter of SCP-7001. The tile floor was shattered in a radial pattern around a large, black void. As LUIE approached, the internals of the sunken space were seen to contain infinite mirrored copies of SCP-7001 folding in on each other in fractal patterns. The void slowly expanded as the walls and ceiling began to bulge towards it. Loose items around the lobby began to fly towards the singularity, circling above before being sucked inwards. LUIE attempted to resist this force until a chair leg clipped a rotor causing it to spin into the void, quickly losing connection. All UIEs were declared missing in action following the conclusion of this mission as all attempts at remote reconnection have failed. The large void discovered in LUIE's findings is believed to be a singularity centered solely in SCP-7001. The exact expansion rate of this void is currently unknown though it appears exponential. Containment Failure Report Foundation Sites 17, 120, 43, 666, and 54 underwent simultaneous containment breaches of multiple, 
hostile Euclid and Kitter class entities. Containment forces are working to subdue and recontain all released anomalies. By overseer order, on site nuclear warheads are to be primed for detonation. Addendum 7001.8, message from 05 1. On the 1st of March, 2004, 05 1 did not report in at site 01. This was initially believed to be an act of protest as a result of the dissenting vote from the rest of the council. However, 05 1 subsequently broadcasted the following message to all Foundation terminals. This message could not be interrupted in the given time frame of one hour. From the desk of 05 1. The Foundation is undergoing a mass collapse of our containment infrastructure. In approximately 12 hours, multiple Foundation sites may be forced to detonate their nuclear warheads to prevent the release of innumerable hostile entities. Site 19 does not exist. It is an anomalous meme that has infected all ranks of the Foundation that the Overseer Council designated as SCP-7001. Since its discovery, SCP-7001 has been responsible for the exponential breakdown in containment we've experienced over the last month. The Overseer Council has neglected to authorize the immediate harsh containment procedures needed to combat this anomaly, and as such, the Foundation as a whole is veering toward its destruction. I call on all sites to initiate immediate lockdown procedures and have all guards ready to sustain containment by all means necessary. We will not fall. All Foundation terminals were subsequently forced offline until a follow-up note from Overseer Consensus could be drafted. All non-SCP-7001 sites did comply with the recommended lockdown procedures. An emergency meeting of the Overseer Council was called by 05-12. 05-1 did not attend. His last known location pinged via satellite outside of the SCP-7001 affected site 322. 05-1 enters SCP-7001, but does not find himself inside site 19. He is instead met by a small, dark room. A man, the administrator, sits behind an amber-colored wooden table meticulously writing on a notepad. He does not meet the overseer's confused gaze. 05-1, the hell. The administrator, sit. 05-1, what did you do? The administrator, when you let something like 19 run itself, it tends to get a rambunctious side. You think I'd let a thaumaturge manage a site of my own will, with those liabilities running around? You saw it firsthand. Always been that way, but they do their jobs well. 05-1, you let it be like that. Huh, you can't even control your largest site. The administrator, and... I let you and your twelve pals be immortal. Certain, liberties need to be allowed in my line of work. Putting all of that craziness into Site 19 prevents it from seeping into the rest of our ranks. 05-1, where is 19? There is a moment of silence. The administrator, I shut it down. 19 no longer exists. This is simply my office. 05-1, why? Why would you do this now, and not from the beginning? The administrator, because I want to talk to you, 1. Give you an explanation. So, can we chat? 05-1, we are on the brink of collapse. 
I have five sites primed for self-destruction, and you want to chat. The administrator, I picked you to be the lead overseer for a reason, one. A leader needs to hold firm in his beliefs, once he starts questioning himself, the ship sinks. I promise you, all will be fixed once we talk. I chose you for your wits, and your strong positions. Once you get into headspace, it's hard to get out. An admirable quality. 05-1, I don't need your empty compliments. Flattery is a cheap trick, even for you. The administrator, I need you to understand that this is your fault, 1. I tried to let you all tire yourselves out, to let things settle. Let you see it was pointless and forget. But no I stupidly underestimated you. 05-1, this is not my fault. This is your mess, and you need to fix it. I've spent my life cleaning up for you. The one time I actually need something from you, you vanish. The administrator, you're acting like I'm unappreciative. Don't get me wrong, I understand your frustration, 1. 05-1, no you do not. You gave me the job of keeping order, and I couldn't because you kept me from the truth. I'm sick of this game, and I'm sick of your empty flattery. Your life's work is to secure, contain, and protect but you couldn't do those three simple things to a dirty secret could you? The administrator, you know, it's funny you bring up secure, contain, protect. Those three words are like gospel for us, but when the foundation began, we were failures. Objectively, we were failing. Our turnover rates, deplorable. Nowadays, you know how easy it is to recruit a bright-eyed genius from the Ivy Leagues. But back then, we were a joke. A brutal joke. 05-1, we were starting out. The administrator, human memory isn't meant to last for hundreds of years, so maybe you've forgotten. The number of people we burned through was insurmountable, researchers, D-class, directors, no one lasted. There was a breach every day. Anomalous groups were attacking us left and right. For years they'd come in and take whatever they wanted. 05-1, I remember, I do. Almost got shot by an insurgent during my first year. The administrator, even then, it's different doing paperwork for a site director versus being at the top. For 20 years, we, I couldn't fulfill those three simple words, secure, contain, protect. 05-1, I don't understand. That's all I've been trying to do this past month. All I've done is tried and failed, tried and failed. The administrator, then you know the power those words have. Before 19, we had no real power to speak of other than a few big buildings and a few big cages. I made 19 to give us the actual tangible authority on containment we needed. 05-1, so, 19 was just a farce, some sort of empty display of power to intimidate people. The administrator, there's no farce, and 19 wasn't the only thing I made. I made the role of the administrator, a stable, secretive, undying force behind the madness, secure. The Overseer Council, a team of the top minds devoted to our cause, who will go to any and all lengths to keep the anomalous inside of the veil, protect. And Site 19, the largest site, sparing no expense for personnel, our anomalies, research and defense, contain. P. 
people outside and in began to fear us and our perceived power, but most importantly, they believed in us, and that's what gave us our success. 05-1, Physical Pillars The Administrator, that's what I wanted, but, it's a fickle thing. A Site 19 was built, but as it got larger, more anomalies, more people, it grew more unstable, and it adapted into what it is now. That amount of anomalous energy in one place, even as big as 19, never ends well. Site 19 is as real as any other site, but doesn't exist like every other site. I didn't have a choice, at that point. It was doing its job, our containment infrastructure was better than I could have ever imagined. 05-1, why keep this all a secret? All of us could have saved a lot of trouble if, I don't know, we knew this. All that time I wasted on sending task forces in, arguing, and trying my damnedest to fix everything was all for nothing. The administrator, when you see through the fake it, belief disappears. Did you think these containment failures magically pop up? This was the reality we lived when we first started. Everything is back to chance. 05-1, so what do I do now? Too many people know. The administrator, you can choose. You have everyone forget, including yourself, with no guarantee you or anyone else won't find it again, or everyone remembers, and our strength diminishes back to what we once were. Release control, or keep your stranglehold. It's your choice. A brief pause. The administrator, once I'm done with this sentence, 19 will be back, and you can decide to leave or go in. A flash. 05-1 stands outside of SCP-7001 at his last known location. He looks around, puzzled, and checks the time. 9.54, the same as when he first arrived. Cracks are forming along the walls of SCP-7001. Dust and rubble are piling on the ground as vibrations rattle the area. The overseer takes a deep breath, then marches into the site. SCP-7001 is empty. Desks, terminals, people, and anomalies are gone. The sound of rattling metal and stone fill 05-1 SEs as he paces through the entrance hall. Cracks, forming spiraling, infinite fractal patterns grow with each step that's taken. In the distance, the air ripples, as if a great amount of energy and heat is being expelled. As he proceeds, 05-1 notices lab coats strewn haphazardly on the floor. A rust-colored mixture is seen splattered around the hallway. Identification badges, anomaly files, blueprints, and notes are all left lying on the ground, ripped and cracked in the same spiral pattern. 05-1 enters the main lobby, a massive panopticon of 30 stories. He looks down. The floor has been subsumed by a massive endless pit of reflective darkness. The entire site is bulging towards this singularity as if it's being sucked in, but trying to resist. He moves to the edge of the pit, and leans over. A reflection of SCP-7001 can be seen, infinitely repeating, folding inwards on itself and spewing more reflections out. Colors shift from a deep red to a shining blue to gray and back again. Glass cracks and metal melts, then forms back and repeats the process. With a breath, the overseer closes his eyes, takes a final step. And falls. He falls for what feels like hours. 
his figure is reflected infinitely around him. He looks at them, and they all stare back. He sees himself as a child, then as a foundation recruit, on the day of his promotion to site director, his first day as 05-1, the death of his parents, and the death of himself. He sees the overseer council room, empty and dilapidated. The leather of the thirteen chairs is covered in rot and mold. A spiraling crack grows on the massive council table. It crumbles into dust and blows away. He hears his voice blare the word contain infinite times until it's nothing but a cacophony of droning screams. There is a sudden silence. The void begins to ripple, churning from a mass of familiar colors to an incomprehensibly bright, burning light. There is darkness for a moment, and then there's nothingness. 05-1 lands. He moves his hands around himself, feeling a smooth, malleable silkiness around him, the end of the void. There is a comfortable warmth around him. It feels as if the overseer has been here before. He feels an odd sensation, an invisible force, the embodiment of containment surrounding him as he stands in the heart of Site 19. Every drop of blood spilled during a containment breach, every successful recovery mission, and every locked door his personnel closed washes over him at once. An incomprehensible sensation. These feelings rapidly flicker past him, never giving the overseer a moment to focus. The overseer stands in the empty void again. His mind clears. The sensation evaporates, but containment remains. As if on instinct, 05-1 reaches out and pushes his hand into the void, and passes through. A meeting of the Overseer Council has been scheduled to discuss the use of the dead man's switch on all Foundation personnel, and subsequent rebuilding efforts. Meeting of the Overseer Council Begin Log 05-1, all right, we're good to start. We're here to discuss the dead man's switch incident last month. Not to be the one to point fingers, but someone in here triggered the emergency amnestics and I want to know why. 05-12, Nine already said she has Jones looking into the incident. So far the finger hasn't been pointed at anyone. 05-13, let's keep our heads on until we have some sort of evidence. Until then, we need a full team effort to keep everything in line. 05-1, you know what, you're both right. Team effort. 05-4, I have red right hand split into teams of two to make sure all the sites are in fit shape. You are up. I think most groups should be back by the end of the week. They've been telling me everything is just about back to around 100%. What we do know is there's a whole of like two weeks to a month's worth of information. The only site that didn't need some sort of reconstruction was 19. 05-1, Tilda runs a tight ship over there and 19s always on top of themselves. That's expected. Have them allot some of their personnel to nearby sites to help if necessary. 05-3, that sounds reasonable. 05-7, they have enough people to spare, I'm on board. 05-1, I'll put it to a vote. Proposing that Site-19 be allowed express permission